I never really thought about how to start this thing. You don't know how you're going to start? <laughs> no. You this start is, however you want to start. This is, this is, this is, <coughs> welcome to Stu's Spooky Corner. I love what you've done with the place, by the way. There's a lot of decoration on the wall. It looks really spooky. Well, you can see, I'm really happy that the one thing you can see in frame with me is my exhausted book reader. Mm. She's just dramatically draped across her couch with a book. Is that akin to yourself? Is that it why? It is very akin to me, except yeah. unlike her, I usually have a three-year-old sitting right here jumping up yeah, and down. Yeah, that is accurate. Hello. Welcome to Stu's Spooky Corner. We're spookifying, uh, where we talk about the haunted, the uh, disturbing, and the true crime. I am here with my hubby. <laughs> I'm going so. to need to spike this with some booze. Maybe anyway. one day we could do a, every time someone we'll says We'll do one this where thing. we're just drunk. <laughs> we're just smashed the whole time. So today I wanted to talk to you about the Winchester Mystery House, which is very, very popular. I think it's like one of the top, it's in, it's on every single top 10 most haunted places in America. I think it's on a couple of like in the world lists too. It's place always changes so i can't really tell you what number it is because some people are like oh it's the most haunted place in america and then some people are like oh it's like the fifth haunted because you know we've got all these other places no one really knows no one has a tally no one can tell our story starts with the winchester the winchesters uh the not actual sam and dean. no not sam and dean so not, not the good winchesters yeah not the good winchesters the the ones we all Bummer. like to watch <clears throat> lost my shoe no, it's probably what their characters were named after, which was the Winchester revol- repeating rifle. It was the uh, gun the that won yeah. the West, gun that owned the West, ran the West. I brought this, not because I have notes on it, but because I might need to fact check some things. But right now, it's the people who had the Winchester revolving repeating rifle thing that everybody used in the West. Okay. The story more so is about Sarah Winchester, who I adore so within like a year three major people in her life died her father-in-law her husband and her baby who was only a couple months old within like a year they all died and she was left being one of if not the richest woman in the world at the time because she inherited half of the company when her husband died oh yahtzee yeah cha-ching yeah <laughs> Not only does she get a bunch of money, but she doesn't have to deal with all those people. Let's dress her out. Her family. <laughs> so that's good for her. She, How old was she? She was young. How young is young? She was like in her, I want to say it was like early to mid 20s. Okay. When all this happened. That's not too young. I was thinking no. like a little girl or something. No, but I also don't know. So her daughter died when they were... She died at only a month old when she was in like 1866. Okay. And her husband and her father-in-law died a year apart. Okay. Her father-in-law died first, leaving the company to her husband. Her husband then died within a year of that and left half of the company to her, making her one of, if not the richest women in the world at the time. Oh, so what makes her so spooky? Well... What makes her so, well, she, her, okay, this is where the story gets convoluted. The only thing I know about it is, like, her house is, like, super weird, right? Yeah. That's the only thing I know about, like, the Winchester house is that there's, like, doors that go to, like, nowhere or something. There's a door to nowhere, and I will get there. Yeah, yeah. So she supposedly, I guess I shouldn't say supposedly because I'm supposed to go through it. She went to a medium to consult why she was having this bad luck, why within a year her husband died, why her father-in-law died, why her baby even died young. And the medium told her that her family was being haunted and cursed by all of the souls killed by the Winchester rifle. Oh. Hmm. And since that was the gun that won the West, it was a lot. So by that logic, I wonder wonder how many souls Oppenheimer was like, being haunted with. by <laughs> <laughs> or the people in the manhattan project oh well, we could go on and on about the people guy that invented who probably the gun. yeah like <laughs> what about the guy that invented the first knife <laughs> are they haunted by like cane uh so the medium told sarah that the only way for her to protect herself was to move west 
And I believe the actual quote that everybody likes to quote is, if the hammers ever cease, hence she bought a eight, at the time it was an eight room farmhouse out in San Jose on a olive grove, but they also had some other like citrus trees on there, I think. So the medium told her, if you ever buy a house out west, you're going to die. And then she immediately buys a house out west. No, she said, if you don't buy a house out west, you're immediately going to die. Okay, so the opposite. I don't know why the ghosts were so specific about the location. Yeah, that's that's pretty but specific. But they were specific. It gets more specific. Okay. She would supposedly do a... So she took this eight-bedroom, this eight-room farmhouse and turned it into what is now known as the Winchester Mystery House. Huge. I mean, there are... Like, let me look this up because I want to be very specific about how large this like houses and i don't want you to get anything spoiled for you okay so it has buh, buh, buh. oh wow there's it says there's like 160 rooms right now but you can only explore and like see 110 how yeah many, how many rooms there's 160 rooms but only 110 are open to the public right now is she the only one living there y- yeah it's kind of weird because, like, she had servants and she had, like... Oh, right, because she's super rich. Yes. She had, like, staff. I don't like calling them servants. Staff. She had staff that lived there, too. Um, but, yeah, so there's 160 rooms, 200-something doors. And that's kind of where... And I don't even know how many staircases and things like that. Um. Oh, apparently you can pay more to see the other rooms, but only 110 are available on their regular tour. Um, How convenient. I know. I was about to say, (laughs) well, well, okay. I mean, I would pay more to explore the entire house and I will one day. We are going out to see it one day just just to set your expectations high. Yay. (laughs) Um, And so she built it from like, literally she took eight rooms and made them 160. I'm not into ghost stories, by the way, in case you didn't notice that. Just want to make that clear. But you are. Very much so. Mm. Love me a good haunted ghost story. But um, the Winchester is one, like the Winchester Mystery House is one of my favorites. And Sarah Winchester is one of my favorites because there's just so many, there's so much unknown because of the time it was. And also the fact she was a woman. Unknown because of the time? What do you mean? Well, it was the 1800s. Mm Mm-hmm. And early 1900s. And so records weren't kept as well. Okay. And. um, But what specifically do you mean was unknown? Well, there was just a lot. Like with the story as I'll unfold it, like I'll let you know, like people just don't know a lot because like I said. Because of bad record keeping. Because of bad record keeping. And the fact that Sarah never remarried. She didn't have any other family really out there with her. So there really wasn't anyone to tell her story. Like a lot of times, you know, you have family members that continue on and tell your legacy. Sarah never had that. So it's really just a bunch of speculation. She built this amazing home that is just full of mysteries that no one understands why. Uh, and we'll get into kind of that. Um, but no one actually knows like the real reason. And there's a lot of different theories out there. And we're never going to really truly know what Sarah was thinking when she built this house. Okay. And we're not going to know too much about Sarah herself. Um, Because, again, it's all just speculation. Because there's no family that, you know, Annie, her one daughter, died at a month old. She never had any other kids. Uh, William died. She didn't have any, like, family close by that that she would have told her story to. So with the Winchester Mystery House, this is where things get pretty great so like i said it was an eight farmhouse eight room farmhouse that she turned into a 160 rooms mansion that is there today and you've got staircases that literally lead into the ceiling you have there's one room that like you go through a door and it just drops down into the kitchen there's two basements there's a door to nowhere which is literally a door that just opens up to a two-story drop outside there are there's a hall of fireplaces which is just a hallway lined with fireplaces there are the famous switchback stairs which are stairs that are like this they're like this big and they just go back and forth and they go all the way up to like every floor of the house there are 
doors that open to nothing and there are hallways that end nowhere. So she was crazy. That is a theory. Yeah. Supposedly what she was doing was she was building a house to confuse the spirits haunting her. Okay, that's the other theory? That is one of the big theories. That's the huge, like, ghost haunting thing is that she was building a house to confuse the spirits, which is why there's so much about this house that doesn't make any sense and why there's so many mysteries. I mean, seriously, you go on YouTube or any kind of ghost, like every single ghost show out there has been to the Winchester Mystery House, and I've seen most of them. And some of them have gone back multiple times because it's just so haunted and it's so mysterious. Like no one knows. So they always try to find out using ghost methods. There's a couple of ghosts that people see a lot. Suppose, Like again, supposedly, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. That they see a lot. Uh, Sarah is one of the ghosts. She died in the house of old age. And she's supposedly a ghost that people see a lot there. They see um, Clive, the Wilborough ghost, who was a staff member that worked there. He worked by, he fixed her fireplaces, stoked the fires, things like that. Um, Different people say different things. Some people say Clive is an angry spirit. And then some people say he's a very friendly, helpful spirit. Sarah also loved kids. So she let the neighborhood kids play in her house, especially in her basement. Like a lot of the staff members who do speak of Sarah speak very highly of her of her being a very kind soul. And so she would let the neighborhood kids play in her home. And so some people say that they still see kid ghosts in the basements, like playing hide and seek. And then a couple of different um, staff members and stuff like that. The thing that's so interesting about the mystery house is like every single show, like ghost show you watch has a different theory and thought. So I like watching Ryan and Shane, and I've made you, I don't think you remember it, but I made you watch the Winchester house that they did. I think that's where I remember the doors that go to nowhere Mm -hmm. and the the weird house design. They talk about a lot of different theories, Um, but I was watching Sam and Colby who are on YouTube, and they were talking to Garrett Watts, who I watch, and he was about to go into the mystery house, and they were kind of telling him about it. And they made a comment that I hadn't really heard before, and that was that Sarah wasn't building the house to confuse the spirits. She was building it as kind of a safe way for ghosts and spirits that hadn't passed on yet or couldn't pass on as like a place for them to be. As How a way, would that be safe? Well, in that theory, she didn't actually believe she was being haunted, but she felt close to her husband and her daughter. Some people said that she even spoke to her husband um, and that her husband was one of the ghosts and is one of the ghosts there. And so people say she did a seance every night at 3 a.m. to get building instructions from the ghosts or just to try to reach out to ghosts. But a lot of people say it's a spiritual hub where even people who didn't die in the Winchester had nothing to do with the Winchester end up finding their way there. Mm. Uh, It really depends on what your opinion on ghosts are and so some people believe that like mirrors are kind of doorways and if you have like two mirrors facing each other it creates like a portal that ghosts can use um the stanley is a really good the stanley hotel is a really good example of this where it's people believe that the stanley hotel is kind of like a hub if you will where ghosts will come from that they'll be latched onto someone else and that's the inspiration for the shining Yes, Stanley the Stanley Hotel was the inspiration for The Shining. It's where Stephen King stayed when he got the idea for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but people believe that the Stanley Hotel is so haunted because like, spirits will be attached to someone else and follow them, and then they end up getting stuck in the Stanley, or they stay there. And it's kind of the same thing with the Winchester. Some people believe that ghosts, especially like loved ones, can kind of be stick around and like attach themselves to a loved one and so they get stuck kind of or choose to stay in the winchester um i've heard that sarah winchester was an in, an incredibly intelligent woman that she knew multiple languages that she was really good in science and math sarah mm-hmm. that she was like i said an extremely intelligent woman and she decided to build the house herself and not because 
ghosts told her to. Well, by build, you mean design. She mm-hmm. didn't like... No, no, no. She had builders, but she designed right, it. Right. <laughs> uh, and people, some people, you know, believe that she designed it to confuse the ghosts. And then some people believe, like, again, there's no historical evidence to this, but they do know she built, like, designed it herself because you can actually see, like, her hand, like, her handwriting and, like, her hand drawings of some of the things she wanted to do. What do you think? I think that Sarah was an intelligent person. And I think that she kept designing the house to kind of distract herself from her grief Mm. because she never really got remarried. She moved out West, I think for a change of scenery and, you know, cause there really wasn't anything for her. They lived out in new England and there really wasn't anything for her in new England. And people also said that she had arthritis later in life too. And so being out in California would probably be better than New England with that too. And there's also on record a lot of like from the time she lived in California and started building a lot of earthquakes happening between then and when she died. So chances are, and this is something that a lot of people believe, um, is that like the doors that go to a brick wall or the staircases that just lead to a ceiling and not a floor were most likely something that was a room at some point but got destroyed in an earthquake Mm -hmm. interesting and so instead of rebuilding the room she just kind of sealed it off that does seem a little more logical (laughs) yeah than than like oh i'm trying to confuse spirits and like the switchback stairs which are the small stairs were most likely built so that she could still access the whole house when she had arthritis later in life and couldn't really lift her legs up Uh, people also believe that a lot of the fireplaces in the home were to help keep the home warm again to help her arthritis so that it wouldn't because cold activates and like really irritates joints yeah and so by putting her in you know by having all of these fireplaces to keep her warm it would help with her arthritis okay and most likely she just kind of kept building on this home to kind of distract herself and give her something to do was there maybe i missed it but was there evidence of of her believing in like ghosts or spiritual stuff Or is that something that people have kind of projected on her over the years and assumed? As far as I know, there's absolutely no proof that she was a spiritualist and that she moved because a medium told her to. It's kind of the spooky tale that kind of rose up around her because she was a mysterious woman. She was always dressed in black because she was grieving and, you know, she was like the lone widow on a hill kind of thing. Gotcha. So she became the urgent, the, sorry, the urban legend. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she was a very real person who I think is like, she's just such a cool lady in real life, like in real life, like historically speaking, just because like I said, she did have friends and family, but none of them really lived out West with her. Um, But she was extremely intelligent. She built this house that's still standing and well, she designed the house that's still standing and everyone who worked for her, like no one ever had anything bad to say about her. Like everyone thought she was the nicest, sweetest person. And so it's just interesting to me that you have this wealthy widow who, you know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s was extremely educated, wealthy in her own right, unmarried. And this like urban legend is built around her, you know, like in another time, they probably would have called her a witch and burnt her at the stake. (laughs) (laughs) Like she just, I think it was easier to believe at that time that she was getting actually when you really think about it it makes sense because you know back then women weren't really educated and so for a woman to be designing her own home and living on her own and thriving in her own i mean still in mourning and still in grief but it would make sense that they'd build this urban legend where it's like no 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 she's not doing all that it's ghosts (laughs) so why does this story interest you so much like why did you want to do this for the first episode of a spooky corner one because the the win the, the Winchester Mystery House is one that a lot of people know, but it's one of my favorite stories because of Sarah Winchester and this legend that built around her. And like I said, she was just this woman who really was just kind of on her own, sticking to her own, not really meddling with anyone else's business, just doing her. And this like huge legend built up around her. And with people going into the mystery house and like ghost hunting on it, it's always really interesting because I have yet to see one where they didn't come back with like some sort of evidence that was compelling. 
Um, even the people who work there are like, yeah, no, we see things all the time. And it's really interesting to me too, from just a ghosty type of person. Like, you know, when you go to just the real history of it, it's interesting. But then when you go to like the ghosts of it all, it's also interesting because it leaves you wondering if you do believe in ghosts, like, are they getting trapped there? Or was it meant to be just this like cool place that they could hang out until they're ready to move on? Did to she die the in next the house? Life? She did. Okay. And she was not buried in the house. She's buried in a cemetery, but they did the funeral and the so. wake and everything there. Okay. How did she die? Old age in her sleep. So it's not like she was killed by a ghost or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, someone somewhere might believe that, but she mm-hmm. was like in her 90s. This was an episode that was kind of all over the place because it is the first one. It's okay. But it's going to be kind of like what I said. Like there's different true crime things that really interest me, some unsolved murders, some just interesting true crime in general. So we'll talk about haunted locations. We'll talk about ghost stories. We'll talk about like I said, true crime. And then also there's just these like disturbing moments in history that I find really interesting that I want to talk to you about. Ooh, like what? Well, there's a couple of different like um, mental hospitals that I think are really interesting with like how, especially, you know, with our background, knowing how kids and like individuals who had different disabilities were treated way back when like i definitely would have been institutionalized for a lot of things <laughs> just for having like a your own opinion on something you know <laughs> i Witch! read i read way too much you read Witch? i read so i would have been burnt at the stake at one time <laughs> or thrown into a asylum at one point too heck women were thrown into asylums just because their husbands wanted oh yeah to get divorced you're acting strange oh well uh, we better get you to the asylum <laughs> oh you have the saddies time to get a lobotomy like yeah lobotomy it was, that was the word i was thinking or about. oh you're you're a little you can't sit still throw you into an asylum like there you go Tend like to mess with your brain like kind of going back to sarah winchester like she was this woman who was super intelligent super wealthy very independent and people, I honestly believe that people couldn't be bothered to believe that a woman could do all these things or accomplish all this on her own, but there was no man in her life. So their only way of justifying in their minds that this happened was to bring a spiritual ghosty element to it. Mm. No, 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 no. She can't do this. She's a woman. And so it must be ghosts. <laughs> it must be male ghosts specifically. The ghosts mm. of men are telling this woman how to build this house. We sure have come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And so that's kind of where I want to go with this, because these are all things that really intrigue me. What are your thoughts about ghosts being trapped in the Winchester? I don't think about ghosts because they're not real. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I need a new co-host. This is me officially opening auditions to Stu Spooky Corner new co-host. No, I think the dynamic, that's how the dynamic goes, though. There's always the believer and the skeptic. So if you think about it, I'm actually the perfect co-host. Yes, but the spectic. The spectic. The spectic. The spectic. Mm. <laughs> that's who my co-host needs to be. I need a ghost. A ghost is a co-host? Yes, I need to go get a book on how to summon a ghost. A co-host ghost? Yes. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> I think it'd be cooler if it was like a possessed doll, like if that thing was possessed or something. No, I threw out the possessed doll. Don't tell my mother. I threw out the possessed doll. We'll get another one. No. Yeah, ghosts, kind of a snore for me, but possessed dolls, I could talk about that all day. Let's let's talk <laughs> well, about some possessed dolls well, or monsters. Annabelle. So cryptids and possessed dolls. And monsters. And monsters. And well, vampires. that's cryptids. Cryptids? Cryptids, that's what they're called. Oh, I never heard that term. Yeah, I so like Bigfoot, now. the... Um, cryptids. Yeti, well, Yeti and Bigfoot are the same thing. Um, Nessie. Yeti and Bigfoot? No, because a Yeti a Yeti is like an abominable snowman, right? Yeah, but they're like... So uh, it's like snow Bigfoot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cold climate Bigfoot. Yeti. Well, Northern Yeti... Northern Bigfoot. Um, yeah, because Yetis are kind of like both, but mm-hmm. Bigfoot is supposed to be like the North American. Did you know, on a side note, just this is this is, this is is the ADHD part of this it's fine, go ahead. episode. Uh, apparently, every single state has a supposed Bigfoot sighting in it. That is cool. But like what Bigfoot is living in the desert of Arizona? 
It's probably just some really hairy homeless guy or like a really big dog. Or a hippie. <laughs> or a I hippie. Could see like really hairy, dirty hippies. Just a really hairy hippie. <laughs> or like Utah. Like I guess Utah's not a desert. Nevada. Utah's pretty deserty. Yeah, but it has some like mountains and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of deserty though. But like Nevada. Mm-hmm. Think about like Nevada's deserty. Where yeah. where's Bigfoot hiding out there? It's a good question. But then I guess if Sand you go foot. too deep into the desert, you could die. So maybe it's hiding out there. Maybe it's like a cactus. So even those states have Bigfoot sightings? Every single state. That's interesting. I think even Hawaii. Or alleged, you mean Bigfoot I sightings? I want to know what a Hawaiian Bigfoot would look like. We should get some of those hats that say gone squanchin. <laughs> or the I believe and it's just Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Me yeah, too. no, cryptids are like the Jersey Devil uh bigfoot monsters basically mm-hmm. we need an ending how do you end this how do we end this i don't know i don't do podcasts it's yours we should say stay spooked at the same time look at the camera <laughs> okay one no wait wait we have to say this has been Stu spooky corner stay spooked this has been Stu's spooky corner stay spooked wait you didn't do it when do we do it how do we do this oh, i'll just let you do it oh well i'll say stay spooked but you could say the first part um but say it with more energy this time I was doing it like a, like a, like a spooky thing. No, like a, like a jazz co-host person. What is jazzy about this? <laughs> Does this set up scream jazzy to you? I'm just adding a little bit of jazz into this. It, Halloween <laughs> jazz? I don't think Halloween and jazz really go together. You obviously haven't l- looked at my vibes YouTube playlist. There's no, lots of haven't. jazzy autumn spookies. It's like lo-fi, but jazzy. If you say so. You gotta be the spookies. <laughs> now I'm gonna go into a deep dive of looking for spooky jazz. Yeah, send that to me. Yes. Spooky um, spooky remixes, though, like dubstep or like mm. uh, electric swing and like spooky music, that kind of goes together. I have some of that in my playlist. Really? Yeah, yeah. I love spooky lo-fi. Yeah. Like spooky lo-fi is my jam. It's always fun in autumn. But now I want to listen to the spooky... I want to listen to those songs. You have to send me those songs. I'll send them to you. Perfect. Uh, So this has been, oh, sorry, can't do it like a 90s smooth jazz operator operation person. So let's just. (laughs) Energy. Okay. Hold. (laughs) This has been Stu's Spooky Corner. That much energy? Yeah. Yes. Are we going to say it? Are we, we saying it, it at the same time? I'm waiting for you to say it.